Welcome back. Home buyers are facing some major headwinds right now. So for example, housing affordability is very close to the worst it's been in the last 37 years. Also, many homeowners are unwilling to sell their houses and get rid of their very low rates. According to data analytics giant Black Knight, they reported that current homeowners have a fixed rate of 3.94% on average compared to the over 7% rates we're seeing today. To make matters worse, they also just announced that home prices this June hit all-time record highs in 60% of the 50 largest U.S. metros. In today's video, I'm going to share all the details, including the cities in which home prices have increased and decreased the most as well. And with that said, I invite you guys to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, because I post frequent housing market updates so you guys can be more informed. Thank you so much for doing that. Let's begin today's video here. Uh, this is, again is from Black Knight uh, for uh, their mortgage monitor, which was just announced on August uh, 7th uh, this year. So let's first talk about uh, the uh, uh, lack of housing affordability because it says here, affordability for new prospective home buyers remains near a 37 year low. On top of this, we're not seeing enough houses being listed for sale because of course, a lot of people have very low rates. Again, for June, the average rate for people who are current homeowners right now, the average rate at 3.94%, uh, which is absolutely insane. Uh, going back to the year 2000, for example, the average rate was about 7.75%. And also going back to early 2021, the rate has been a below uh, 4%, which is contributing to the lack of new listings uh, hitting the market. They also announced that the average monthly housing payment this July just reached an all-time record high of $2,308 per month. Additionally, it currently requires 36.4% of the median household income, or their MHI, to purchase a median price home, the second highest mark in the last 37 years. So get this, it currently requires 12.6 uh, percentage points uh, more of their income to purchase an average price home today compared to the average over the past 25 years. Additionally, all 100 of the largest markets in the US are less affordable than their average 1995 through 2003 average. Although this varies by the market, which I'll share with you guys here in just a little bit. So one thing I do wanna mention is that when I'm talking about home prices in today's video, this is based on Black Knight's a home price index or their HPI for the month of June. Uh, this may be a little bit confusing because I have been reporting to you guys uh, based on Redfin's data that home prices have been decreasing for the past several weeks now, even though they're up year over year. So I wanna mention this because uh, it's gonna be interesting once Black Knight reports July's numbers, which will be in about a month in early September because uh, based on Redfin's most recent data, they're showing a seasonal decrease in home prices. In any case, just wanna mention that because I could uh, envision some uh, confusion regarding uh, this new report from Black Knight here. So for the month of June, Black Knight provided the cities that are the least affordable and also the markets that are the most affordable. So the most affordable market in the US is Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, one thing I do want to mention that this is based on the payment to income ratio. The income there is again the median household income for that area here. And the payment of course is based on the average uh, monthly housing payment on a median price home there. So Cleveland, Ohio was the most affordable market in the US, followed by uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma City, Hartford, Connecticut, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Cincinnati, Detroit, Indianapolis, Chicago, Illinois, and Minneapolis, Minnesota. In contrast, the least affordable markets was Los Angeles, California. That was followed by San Diego, San Jose, San Francisco, Miami, Florida, New York, Seattle, Riverside, Sacramento, and Nashville, Tennessee. The Black Knight also provided an update regarding home sales and housing inventory, or the number of houses for sale. It says uh, close home sales decreased modestly in June, falling to within 3% of January's lows as housing affordability and inventory challenges remain a drag on transaction volumes here. 
So one thing I do wanna mention is that we did see a crash and we are still seeing a crash of home sales or the number of home sales, but not home prices. So let me share this a chart with you guys. So the dark green line right here is the number of home sales seasonally adjusted here. So for the month of June, there's around 250,000 not annualized. So annualized, that'd be uh, a run rate of around 3 million close home sales over the next 12 months here. So uh, seasonally adjusted at around 250,000, uh, but annualized around 3 million. Uh, this is a big difference compared to uh, 2021 and early 2022 when um, on an analyzed basis there's around 4.8 to 5 million close home sales that was the pace back then now it's well below that so home sales have been falling off a cliff due to housing affordability and also due to a lack of houses for sale as you can see right here the green line is active listing count or um, housing inventory, uh, seasonally adjusted here. So back in 2007 and 2008, there was nearly 2.5 million houses for sale. Now there is about 750,000. This means we have approximately 70% fewer homes for sale compared to 2007 and 2008. Black Knight also provide the areas in which inventory is down the most compared to pre-COVID levels. And also they identify the two markets, there's only two markets that actually have more homes for sale right now compared to the average June in 2017 through 2019. So Connecticut remains a pusher child regarding a lack of houses for sale. So Hartford, Connecticut uh, is down by 81%. Uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut is down by 78% and New Haven, Connecticut is down by 77% compared to pre-COVID levels. In contrast, Austin, Texas is up by 5% and Las Vegas saw an increase of 9%. Those are the only two markets that are up compared to pre-COVID levels. And when I mean pre-COVID levels, I mean the average June 2017 to 2019. So let's change gears uh, slightly here and talk about more regarding home prices. So this is pretty wild here. So Black Knight is reporting here that after slowing for 14 consecutive months, the annual home price growth rate, this is the changes in home prices year over year, um, actually increased this June by 0.8%. So the year over year change was going down for 14 consecutive months. This June, we actually saw an increase. As you can see by this uh, very small increase, in the year over year change in home prices based on their HPI. And that was after 14 consecutive months of decreases year over year. So this red line or dark black line, I should say, is actually uh, changes compared to one year ago. Whereas the uh, green uh, shaded areas is the one month change on a seasonally adjusted annualized rate. So we saw a huge run up in prices in 2020 through the first half of 2022 and then home prices uh, you know, more or less fall off a cliff in the second half uh, last year. Whereas this year, we've been seeing uh, home prices increase once again, again, more so due to the lack of houses for sale uh, in the US right now. And speaking of that, here's the uh, month or month change in their HPI. Um, as you can see, nearly every region or nearly every city here has posted an increase compared to one month ago. In contrast, Austin, Texas and San Antonio were the only markets to see prices decrease month to month in June on a seasonally adjusted basis, with prices relatively flat in Dallas, Texas, and also a slight increase of 0.1% in Houston. In contrast, the strongest price growth was actually in Hartford, Connecticut, an increase of 1.2% from May to June this year. That was followed by uh, Seattle, which saw a gain of 1.2%, and also San Jose, California, just south of San Francisco, also saw a month-to-month -month gain of 1.2%. Additionally, on a national level, according to Black Knight here, home prices this June fully erased the correction we saw in 2022 because home prices on a national level this June reached a new all-time record high. In fact, just like I mentioned at the very beginning of this video here, 60% uh, of the markets are now seeing prices above the all-time record highs that was set back in 2022, with Hartford, Connecticut topping the list, an increase of 8.2% above last year's highs. 
On top of that, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania are also more than 5% above last year's peaks as well, with a handful of Midwest and Northeast markets, which include Kansas City, Virginia Beach, Richmond, uh, Baltimore, Providence, St. Louis, and Chicago up by more than 4%. I should say up by more than 4% from 2022's highs. In contrast, home prices in Austin, Texas are still down by 13.6% compared to the all-time record high that was set back in 2022. And that was followed by uh, San Francisco, Phoenix, Las Vegas, and Seattle um, down by more than 7%. And here's a graphic showing just that um, Austin, Texas, I mean, just a huge decrease compared to what they saw uh, during the peak in 2022, off by nearly 14%. Uh, again, San Francisco down by 8.8%, followed by Phoenix, Las Vegas, Seattle, San Jose. Uh, Sacramento is also down by 5.6% uh, from 2022. We have not reached uh, a new all-time high. We're down for, kind of from the peak we saw last year. Uh, also, these are also, most of these markets here are really pandemic um, hotspots that home prices shot up greatly uh, over the past several years here. But after uh, Salt Lake City was Denver, Nashville, Dallas, Portland, Oregon, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, San Antonio, Texas, Riverside, and San Diego down by 2.2%. What's interesting to me regarding this is that most of these areas here are in the uh, western side of the US here. So of course, I always say that um, every housing market's different, right? So uh, again, on a national level, this June, uh, according to Black Knight at least, we're at all time record highs for home prices on a national level. Having said that, there's still uh, these markets here which are down compared to last year's highs. And you can see that right here as well because if you look at the map of the US, the Western states or the metros in the Western part of the US uh, are down compared to uh, 2022's peak, whereas uh, areas in the uh, Midwest and also in the Northeast are actually up compared to last year's levels. They also announced that 42 markets in the US experienced an increase in home prices this June compared to June of 2022. In fact, the biggest increase was actually in Hartford, Connecticut, an increase of 9.3% compared to June of 2022. That was number one. Uh, followed after that was Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a gain of 6.2%, and then Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Cincinnati, Ohio, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Kansas City, Providence, Rhode Island, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, Richmond, Virginia, and St. Louis, Missouri, uh, running out the top 10 here. In contrast, here are the markets that decreased the most compared to 12 months ago. So leading the nation again is Austin, Texas, a decrease of 13.5%, well below any other market here. So number two spot was at Las Vegas, down by a 7.7%, and then Phoenix, Arizona, Salt Lake City, Utah, San Francisco, down by 5.3%, Seattle, Sacramento, uh, year over year, down by 3.8%, and that was followed by Nashville, Tennessee, Dallas, Texas, and Denver, Colorado. So you can see here, the uh, pandemic boom towns are experiencing the biggest decreases year over year, whereas areas in the Midwest and Northeast are experiencing the biggest increases in home prices. Um, also, something worth noting here as well regarding Austin, Texas, is that back in 2021, and also for the early part of 2022, that market experienced the biggest increase in home prices, whereas right now, they're experiencing the biggest decreases on a national level. Another big change as well is Miami, Florida. So Miami, Florida led the nation with the biggest increases in prices for eight consecutive months in late 2022 and early 2023. Whereas for the month of June this year, they're in the number 12 spot. And with that said, please leave me a comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video. Also, if you guys got any value at this video whatsoever, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. Of course, I appreciate you. Hope you guys have an awesome day and look forward to seeing you on the next video.